Anger is often seen as the enemy, a destructive force that leads to aggression and negativity. However, the true culprit behind our emotional turmoil is not anger itself, but rather our inflated egos and the tendency to take things personally. The ego is the part of ourselves that craves validation, seeks pleasure, and shuns pain. This self-centered focus creates a world where everything revolves around me and mine. When something challenges our sense of self, be it criticism, failure, or even indifference, the ego reacts with anger or defensiveness. This constant need to defend our egos takes a toll on our well-being. In Jungian psychology, the ego is the conscious mind, the part of the psyche that is aware of itself and its surroundings. It is the center of our conscious awareness and includes our sense of identity, our thoughts, feelings, and sensations. The ego is responsible for our sense of agency and our ability to interact with the world around us. However, the ego is not entirely of the psyche. Jung also proposed the concept of the unconscious, which includes all aspects of the psyche that are not conscious. The unconscious is a vast reservoir of thoughts, feelings, and memories that have been repressed or forgotten. The ego acts as a mediator between the conscious and the unconscious mind, filtering information from the unconscious and presenting it to the conscious mind in a way that can be understood and integrated. According to Jung, the ego is essential for our psychological well-being. It allows us to function in the world and to relate to others. However, the ego can also be inflated, leading to narcissism and a sense of superiority. When the ego is inflated, it can become disconnected from the unconscious, leading to a loss of touch with reality. Now, here are some more common problems associated with the ego and when we take things personally. The overestimated ego. When we have an inflated ego, we exhibit self-centeredness, superiority, and a lack of compassion for others. This magnified ego can harm our decision-making and can cause us to become arrogant and entitled. In this manner, we can experience many conflicts and difficulties in life and in relationships. Then you have the delicate ego. Unlike the inflated ego, a fragile ego is easily injured and overly sensitive to judgment, criticism, and failure. People with a delicate ego may struggle with anxiety, self-doubt, and insecurity, often seeking validation and approval from others. Defensive attitude. Because of its fragile mindset, the ego also becomes defensive, particularly when one's self-image, safety, or beliefs are threatened. This protective behavior prevents vulnerability and humility, which results in unhealthy relationship dynamics. Negative comparison. The ego tends to compare oneself to others and is involved in competitive behavior. Continuous comparison can lead to a sense of inferiority or superiority, depending on the results. The person with such an ego experiences volatile, emotional state that depends on external circumstances, outcomes, and performances. Identity attachment. The ego often forms attachments to particular identities, such as roles, positions, classifications, or achievements. These attachments can be rigid and hinder personal growth and flexibility. The bigger the ego, the greater the resistance to change as it is a threat to self-identity. So what is the solution to an inflated ego in taking things personally? The solution lies in developing a healthier relationship with our egos by understanding its motivations and finding a balance. This involves cultivating humility alongside self-worth. It means recognizing that we are not the center of our universe and that external events don't necessarily reflect on our value as people. The key aspect of this process is learning not to take things personally. When someone criticizes our work, for example, our ego might interpret it as a personal attack. However, by detaching ourselves from our egos, we can see the criticism as objective feedback and an opportunity for improvement. This shift in perspective reduces defensiveness and allows for growth. Jung believed that the goal of psychological development is to achieve a balance between the ego and the unconscious. This process is known as individuation. Individuation is a lifelong journey that involves the integrating of the conscious with the unconscious mind. Through individuation, we can become more whole and complete people. So by developing a healthier relationship with our egos and learning to detach from their self-centeredness, we can unlock greater emotional well-being and navigate the world with less stress and anxiety.